Good morning, church. We welcome you to the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 1111 Granger Road, Conway, South Carolina. We thank God for your presence today in the sanctuary, those listening by telephone or on social media. There are a few announcements to share before we begin our worship service this morning. The first thing is I have a card, and it reads, thank you. There are not enough words to express how thankful we are for your thoughts and prayers in our time of bereavement. The support and comfort you provided will always be remembered by the family of Reverend James Odell Bradley. Let us give the family of the Bradleys a hand this morning and, and our Lord this morning. Bible study will continue on Wednesday, April 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. There will be a brotherhood meeting on Thursday, April 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. We're asking each member to become involved with some organized group in our church. To do so not only strengthen the organization, it also creates a stronger fellowship bond, causing one to feel a greater sense of belonging. And for this morning, this is our new month of April, first Sunday in April. If we have anyone celebrating the birthday in the month of April, would you please stand at this time? Anyone celebrating the birthday in the month of April, please stand at this time. Amen. Continue to lift these persons in prayer as they face challenges in their lives. Sister Monique Perkins, Sister Ramona Baskin, Brother Bobby Washington, Brother James Smith, Sister Stella Carter, Sister Cynthia Simmons, Brother Ivy Only, Brother Kenny Chestnut Sr., Sister Ida Mae Britton, Brother Ike Parmley, Sister Dolores Moore, Sister Christy Romus, Brother Anthony Grant, Brother David Keith, Sister Sarah Graham, Sister Elizabeth Graham, Sister Lillian Stanley, Sister Queenie Jones, Sister Louise Ellerby, Brother Joe Smalls, Sister Beatrice Bellamy, Sister Lubell Ford, Sister Margaret Manning, Sister Johnny Bridges, Sister Maxine Dotton, Deacon George Parker, Reverend Dr. Covia Stanley, Reverend Lonnie B. Chestnut, Brother Kim Myers, Sister Gerilyn Kelly, Sister Irene Sharp, and our pastor, Reverend Dr. Charles M.P. and his family. Pray much for the families of Reverend Odell Bradley, Brother Bill Graves, Sister Misty Ellaby and Sherman family, Sister April Brown, and Sister Rachel Ballin. Please continue to reach out to our sick and shut in. A personal visit, call, text message, or send in a greeting card can mean so much. All members are asked to call the church if you're sick or have death in the family in order that our pastor and members can share in your hour of distress. Our lives are filled with challenges, but in all that we're going through, with God's help, we will get through this together. I say again, we will get through this together. Amen. Now, if we have any guests worshiping with us this morning, would you please stand at this time? Any guests worshiping with us, would you please stand at this time and be recognized? No guests? Well, let's give ourselves a hand and our Lord for being in the house one more time. Amen. Now let us all stand for our call to worship. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Let us pray. <clears throat> 
kind Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful first Sunday. Please, Lord, empower us with strength, your peace, patience, and a spirit of love as you continue to work within us. You've given us another chance to praise you for who you are in our lives. Lord, you've been so good to us. We can't make it without you holding our hands. We need you, Lord, every step of the way. Lord, you didn't have to do anything for us, but you did. And I say, thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for every family represented here this morning. Bless those that don't know you this morning for the pardon of their sins. And bless those, Lord, that's bereaving the loss of a loved one this morning. Lord, please bless those that are sick, afflicted. Lord, you know all about them. Now, Lord, I ask that you bless our pastor in a special way, he and his family. Lord, you know about his struggles. We ask that you raise him up again, O oh Lord. Now, Lord, prepare our hearts for your word this morning. Bless our speaker this day, Reverend Dr. Covia Stanley. Lord, give him the words that he's going to give to us. And let us, Lord, be receptive to thy ear. Lord, let him speak your word boldly. And Lord, let us take it away from this church house. Back to your house. To the school house. Lord, wherever we may go. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless this service. Lord, make it what you would have it to be. Lord, we just ask it all in your son, Jesus Christ's name as we all pray. In the name of Jesus, I say amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Our hymn of praise this morning, holy, 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 let us sing with uplifted voices.
Lifestyle Church say amen. Amen, and you may be seated. <clears throat> now our scripture will be read into your hearing, following our scripture, a prayer by Deacon Aaron Green. Our scripture this morning will be taken from the book of Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. I'll be reading verses 21 through 25. That's Lamentations 3, verse 21 through 25. Beginning at verse 21, and it reads Yet this call, yet this I call to mind. And therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Thus I've read Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 25 from the New International Version of our Bibles, which is indeed God's word for God's people. Let our church say amen. Now our prayer. Good morning, friendship. Prayer is our acknowledgement of our need for God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come once again thanking you for this, another worship Sunday, another worship Sunday where we can gather, fellowship one with another, but more importantly, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth and to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done and will continue to do in our lives. We thank you, Father, for all things. We pray, Father, that you will allow your presence to come into this service today to uplift us, Father, as we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We pray, Father, that you will be with our speaker, Reverend Covia Stanley. Give him strength, Father. Give him power. Give him conviction to bring your word convicting us to be the Christians that you would have us to be. We, have, we thank you, Father, for all things. We offer up this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.
This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. We just thank the Lord for another first Sunday. Amen. 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 Now it is a time where we all have an opportunity to participate. Because a church that is alive needs the liberal, sacrificial support of those who love it. Only a dead church demands no sacrifice. So bring the full tithes into the storehouse. At this time, will our ushers please come forward? Would you please stand? In our offertory prayer this morning, I would like to call Deacon Barnett. This truly is the day that the Lord has made. And we all, we really enjoy it. We're glad that we'll be here in this day. Because so many people lay down last night, they, they didn't get back up here, you know. So they're with the Lord. So we are so thankful, dear Heavenly Father, for allowing us one more day to come into this house. And dear Heavenly Father, as we bow before you in our prayer, we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to come in here into our service. And dear Heavenly Father, reach deeply in each and everyone's heart and give them that desire to give back to you. Because, you know, last Sunday we witnessed our God, our Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead. He was raised from the dead, dead to save our sins. And we say thank you, dear Heavenly Father. And this morning, we just want to give back a small portion of what you provided for us. And we know, dear Heavenly Father, many of us want to give, but we just really don't have it that way. But as long as it's in our heart, we know that you care what we're going to do. So again, we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to continue to bless the service, bless our speaker, bless those who are sick and shut in. Dear Heavenly Father, special blessing on our prayer. We ask these and all other blessings in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. After another selection by Brother Perkins, the next voice that you would hear is none other than Reverend Dr. Kobe Stanley. Let us greet him this morning by saying amen, amen, and amen.
Good morning. We thank God for the opportunity to be here with you this morning on the first Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. And we wish to thank Deacon Eagles, Brother Perkins, and Deacon that prayed and spoken this morning. Thank you for being here today. to tell us and the fact that we got Jesus now he came and made it possible for us to be able to communicate with you and we know dear God as he was crucified as the veil was torn in Jerusalem and as he was in the grave for three days rose on the third day. He had all power in his hand. We pray that we might be able to share this and feel what Jesus went through. Guide us and direct us. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> the events of the past few weeks with the fighting in the Mideast, the fighting in the Ukraine, fighting all over the world. We are going through some changes. We're going through some difficult times. And you've heard me say before, looking at the news, reading the paper, and checking our uh, social media, we got a lot of negativity. A lot of bad things that are going on. People don't know uh, about the value of prayer. People who once upon a time did pray, they don't pray now because everything seems to be good for them from a materialistic standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint, we have fallen off. The negative images stand out more in the eyes of the beholder no matter how much good is done. The African American community has one more blow against us because the majority of the society looks at us as bad people and no good. The Muslim faith is even more fraught with white people and some black people calling them the devil's workers. These truly are the times that try men's souls, as the great American patriot Thomas Paine stated in 1776 at the beginning of the American 
revolution. My brothers and sisters, we need to prepare for a change to turn things around and make it possible for us to enjoy life, to be able to share with one another, to look each other in the eye, listen, and help others to feel that they are truly children of God. God has put up with our foolishness for a long time. He wants us to put the troubles in the past and start a new image and life. Lamentation shows the pain and suffering of the Israelites while exiled in Babylon. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, described these about 586 B.C. This book touchingly reveals the love and sorrows of God for the very people that he chastised. Lamentations in Hebrew is means wailing and mourning. Truly, the African Hebrew Israelites suffered greatly under the chastisement of God Almighty. <coughs> God, in his quest to make his people change, placed great afflictions upon them, causing them to wail and cry out in pain under the oppression of their enemies. Here we go through punishment, repentance, and hope. The Lamentations of Jeremiah expressed the pain, the suffering, and the sorrow of the children of Israel under the oppression of the Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah actually revealed the pain of God in witnessing the suffering of his people. For God is a God of compassion, and his mercy endures Ever. God has always maintained a level of certain concern for his people and has never found pleasure in their punishment. The pain he feels is relative to the pain that most parents feel in the administration of chastisement upon their children. Thus, the scriptural writings of the book vividly deploy the cries of the people during the siege of Jerusalem. Jerusalem fell from the glory of God because of the disobedience of the children of Israel to the word of God. Lamentation not only relates to the biblical writings of Jeremiah, but also the African-American experience. Yes, the music, the Lamentations, or as others say the blues, was the music relating to the struggle of a raptive people in a strange land. The songs truly were called Lamentations or Blues. They spoke of the long, hard days and the feels, the pain, and the suffering. The songs and their deliverance were truly a lament, a period of pride. That is how Jeremiah relayed in chapter 8, verse 21, 22. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, and I heard. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold on me. If there is no balm in Gilead, is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? When Jeremiah states in this scripture that he is black, he is not talking about color. He's talking about spirit. The word used for black in the Hebrew scripture is kadar, K-A-D-A-R, meaning gloomy or 
to mourn. And that is what many of us go through. Some of the Hebrew words for color are Kadesh, Kush, and Ham. He was very worried and concerned about the sufferings of the people. They brought it on themselves by being disobedient and rebellious against God. Yes, Jeremiah mourned greatly. In 2024, I can sense the feeling of Jeremiah. We're going through some difficult times. The dark days. Yes, friendship. Little PD Association, King Select Association, all the different associations across the country. We need to have faith, trust, and hope in God. We need to tell other folks, because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. The cry today is still to turn back to God. And I know Dr. P often talks about us, talking to the young people and talking to other people who do not know about the church. We need to get them to know that there is a God who will make a way for you. There is a God who will relieve you. He will listen to your cry. He will wipe your eyes. He will do things to make you know that there is a purpose in life. There is truly a love that is being passed out to one another. The cry today is still to turn back to God. The African American community has turned away from God. The America has turned away from God. The suffering that we are experiencing is God's punishment to help us understand the error of our way. God wants us to turn back to him. He wants us to fear him, to serve him, to obey him, to be positive images of him. He did not breathe breath into Adam's nostrils for us to be like heathens of the world. Man has gone so far from the vertical relationship that help is needed to put us back in the right alignment with God. A few weeks ago, I talked about the different dimensions of our life. And we come from the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 21, where we we're talking about the fact that you have the breadth, the length, and the height. And what we are referring to here from Jeremiah, we're talking about the height or the hypotenuse, our relationship from the earth up to God. And we need to be more involved in talking to God. Every day we need to wake up praying. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We need to pray every time we get a chance to lift up the name of God. And as I said many times before, we need to teach our children about prayer in the early days. So whenever they get away from the house or when they're in school, they can get into the corner. Lord, thank you for another day. Lord, please forgive me of my many sins. Lord, please help me to do those things that would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. The lesson that we glean from this is that in spite of them being made in the image of God, they have rebelled in the worst of ways. God was very angry that they didn't listen to any of the prophets or their parents or as we look here, we find that image is described as a reproduction, an imitation or a copy of person or thing. Children are the images of their parents. Little Johnny is the fitting image of his daddy. Image may be mental conception held in common by members of a group and symbolic of a basic attitude and orientation. As we give an example, the increased number of teen pregnancies tarnish the image of the western Horry County. This was in the days when I was 
affects in public health. Image is a figure of speech or popular opinion or conception that may be projected through the mass media. The mass media can say so many things and people pick up on that and it's all negative. For example, they talk about rappers. They give them a negative image, but they don't know that people like Will Smith was a top student at MIT in Boston. They don't know about Tupac Shakur. I might not be saying it right. Was a great math student at Juilliard in New York. And P. Diddy was a good student at Howard University. We need to give information that is positive, give information that will show the positive sign and do things that are ble pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. God is hope. Hope is the anticipation of the unseen. Hope is the expectation of success or desired outcome. Paul describes it as, for we are saved by hope, but if we hope for that, we do not see, then do we with patience wait for it. It's a matter of waiting for hope. The hope that is described in verse 21 is not created by minimizing suffering and misery. These are transformed when the mind is turned to God. This is the thing I want to emphasize. We need to have hope. You can't see it, but you know it's there. Yes, God's creation of Adam in his image subsequently multiplied into the Israelites and this was complemented with a covenant that was made between God and Abraham. The covenant called Israel into existence. And the Lord is loving mercy to what he has created. The reality of awakening to a few days is a renewal of God's mercy. Here in the past, last part of the verse, faithfulness is emphasize hope and faith no longer hope and faith go together like a hand and glove Hebrews 11 1 faith is the substance of hope things are hopeful evidence of things not seen Jeremiah had so little of the world's goods and pleasures because his time and love had been devoted to God. And this is why we need to be like Jeremiah. Put our emphasis, our hope, our trust, and everything we do, be devoted to God. By economic standards, he was poor and indigent, but yet he was rich according to God's standard. He was a revolutionary. Jeremiah was a radical. Jeremiah was God's man telling folk to turn back to God. He was a positive image of God. And this is what we want to portray and emphasize, having a positive image for others to see and know that God is still in the blessing business. And as we go down and talk about the yoke, that is described here. It shows the good adjectives express God's will and purpose. This is the acceptance of God's time and God's will. Faith expressing itself in quite hope and the learning experience. God's yoke of service will separate, separate one from ordinary life and lead out proud to being an outcast. Silence implies both acceptance of God's will and refusal to complain to other people. Here, Jeremiah stresses complete submission to God. 
These lead to willingness to be treated as a slave. The yoke was a symbolic side showing servitude. Yes, God's rejection is temporary, even if he afflicts compassion and covenant love will be shown again. And as I was talking about image, we need to let folks know that it is important for you to try and evangelize to lost people. Yes, I think in terms of when I was in public health and I came from Williamsburg County one day, I had on my suit and my tie and I stopped at Arby's to get a roast beef sandwich. And while there, the young lady said, you going to the church to a funeral? And I looked back, what you said? And she said, you got a suit on. Then the people don't see me in a black folk walking around with a suit on Thursday afternoon, unless they're going to a funeral. I said, no, I said, uh, I'm public health and I'm coming back from Williamsburg and, and we need to eat. And so she saw me with my suit on, with my tie on, and I went into the state car. And so it was not that many people at that time were being able to do that. But the young person's mind was only thinking about you put a suit on when you go to church on Sunday or to a funeral. And I said, this is something that I need to let folks know that Young people see us and they have their ideas about what they think we're doing. And we need to maintain positive images. We need to do as uh, Jeremiah is doing. We need to let folks know that there is a God who is still in the blessing business. And I think about the time when I was in Newport News as pastor there that I came into a store and uh, the I walked up to him and said, hello, pastor, how you doing? This is on a Friday. And I said, this is something, you know, people think you are so it's because of the way you dress or the way you act or the way you do things. And, of course, I don't know what I told you about the fact that when my wife and I were flying up to Toronto and we were at uh, the airport there in New York City and a guy white man who's sitting in front of him, stood up and he said, uh, are you a minister? I said, yes, I didn't have no call on, I didn't have anything to denote uh, that I was a minister, but he said, I'm going to have surgery tomorrow in New Jersey. I want you to pray for me. And I took the time and prayed for him right there in the plane, in the airport. What I'm saying is whatever image you portray to people, you got to make sure it's positive. Make sure it's one that, that God is in your life. Every day you want to show folks that God is still in the blessed business. Uh, we have so much work to do, my brothers and sisters. God is compassionate. He gives us hope. When we turn back to him, man was made in the image of God. We got to show Imago Dea. Yes, who are we to say that man or that woman is no good? We need to put positive things on people. God did not make any junk. As I close, I want you to know Four things to remember. One, God made man in his image, Imago Dea. Therefore, you are special. You are somebody. God did not make any junk. God wants you to love, to know, to serve, and to trust him. The suffering that you may endure is temporary. God will help you to carry the burdens he will help you call on him. He's a way maker. Serve God while you are young. Be a good image to others. 
and as the song says, I don't feel no more time. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I don't feel no way's coming too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I can't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Praise the Lord. At the end, I want you to know that put your trust and faith in God, he will make a way for you. I'm a living example. I've gone through a lot of things in my life, and I thank God that he's made a way for me. I thank God for my wife. She is my angel. He's my nurse. Continue to keep her lifted up in your prayer. Pray for my family. Pray for me, and I know that things are going to be difficult, but I continue to look to the hills for which come in my help. I know my help comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. And I want you to know that God will make a way. It might not be things the way you want it, but keep your faith, keep your hope, keep your trust in God. And this is why Jeremiah showed us that you got to do the work of God. He will make a way for you. Yes, and I thank God for Jesus Christ, who we celebrated last week, the resurrection Sunday. I thank God that he went and crucified on the cross. He's buried in the tomb. But on the third day, he rose with all power in his hands. I am so glad that I can say, I know that Jesus lives. I thank you for the resurrection. It helps me to know that I can go on a little bit longer. It lets me know that there is a positive activity. And as you've heard many say, that the absence of heartbeat, the absence of uh, respiration, the absence of brain activity in the head, uh, they are not the uh, negative things in our mortal life, but rather they are commas that lift us up into lofty heights in eternity with Jesus Christ. It's so good to know because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. At this time, I'd like to invite others who do not know about Jesus Christ. We invite you to come now and give God your heart. Give us your hand. If you have been accepted already and you've been baptized, we want you to come. And if you have received a letter, we want you to come. God is waiting for us to do those things that will be pleasing and acceptable in his sight. God is still in the blessing business. If you're out of the ark of Satan, we invite you to come. Give God your heart. Give us your hand. You might have gone through some difficult times. You might have had some problems. You might have had things that did not go to in your favor. Put your trust, put your hope in God. He will make a way for you. Yes, is there one today? going through some difficult times in our families that a lot of dysfunction in our schools there's a lot of problems 
And our military, there are a lot of problems. In our churches, there are a lot of problems. We need to have people to come to Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, let him know the Lord, we need you. We need you. Help us to turn things around. Help us bring about positive images about Christians. Help us, dear God, to lift up your name and help people to know because Jesus lives, we can face time we will continue with the communion. We know that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room and he washed the feet of his disciples and then he took the cup. He took the bread and broke it and said this is my body drink, eat, drink it. Then he took the cup that this is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. And after they supped, they went into the Mount of Olives and fellowship. Let us give Dr. Stanley a, a, a big hand this morning for such a powerful message. Amen. 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 I believe all those that have joined the church in the last couple of weeks, days, months, who anticipate joining the church on their Christian experience, our right hand of fellowship will be during our 11 o'clock service today. 11 o'clock service today. So we ask that you come back, please. Um, other than that, at this time, would you please stand to be dismissed? May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, be communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rose, and abide with you, henceforth now and forevermore, let the saints say, Amen. Amen.